Hello class, uh, I'm going to give you a, a video on chapter 11, which is depreciation, impairments, and depletion. Alright, so you know the depreciation methods. You've seen some videos on those and you've done those in like financial accounting. So we'll talk about depreciation methods, we'll run through some problems real quickly, and we need to talk about impairments. So impairments, there's um, if there's a permanent loss in value, then we're going to run impairments, uh, impairments test. And depletion is super easy, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. We've got a couple of things on chapter 11. All right, so depreciation method. There is the units of activity method, which is the cost minus the salvage value divided by the expected units or hours. And you get a depreciation per hour. So let's say, you, or, or per unit, whatever, you could say uh, we expect this machine to run 10,000 hours, or we could say we expect the machine to produce 100,000 units, and so that would be our base of activity. This is not used a lot. A lot of people just use straight line uh, for their financial purposes. Straight line is the same kind of thing, except it's cost minus salvage value divided by the estimated life. Then you have some accelerated methods like Declining balance. Now, the most popular is the 200% double declining balance, but theoretically, you can have 125%, 150%, 175%. 200% would be uh, the the highest depreciation. And we'll show you how to do a problem like this. Now, declining balance. You take the book value at the beginning of the year. You ignore salvage value at the very beginning. And then you just multiply it times um, 1 over the life uh, times 2 would be double declining balance. Or this 2 right here would be 1.25 or 1.5 or 1.75 or whatever. And then some of the year's digits, you may not have seen this. We'll, we'll work on this here in just a minute. All right, so let's look at a problem here. Assume the purchase of equipment costing $40,000 acquired on April 1st. The salvage value of 8,000, the life of 10 years from April 1, 2016. Also assume it has a life of 8,000 hours. This is for the activity method. So find the depreciation expense for year one, which is 2016, and year two, which is 2017. Well, how do we calculate this? We're going to calculate the cost minus the salvage value. It's going to be 40,000 minus the salvage value of 8,000, so it's 32,000, and the activity is going to be 8,000, so we're going to divide this. We say there's 8,000 hours, so we're going to divide, this is cost minus the salvage value, so we're going to divide 32,000 divided by 8,000, and we end up with exactly $4, $4 per unit. Now, if we use 1,600 hours, then this would be 1,600 hours times $4, and that 6,400 is our depreciation using the units of activity method based on hours. Here, we use 1,700 hours, so it would be 1,700 times 4, so that's 6,800. So that's how you do the activity method. The date, April 1st, does not matter. Now, on straight line, straight line, let's calculate. Remember your purchase on April 1st. So we still have 40,000 minus the 8,000. So we're going to only depreciate 32,000. We're going to depreciate 32,000 uh, on the base of it is 10 years. So how much will we depreciate each year? So it'll be 32,000 divided by 10. So that's 3,200. So the purchase of equipment, 40,000 acquired on April 1st, salvage value of 8,000, the life of 10 years from April 1, starting April 1. So we would normally have 3,200. But we're missing January, February, and March. So we need to multiply this times 9 divided by 12. 
So that's going to be 2400 as our double declining balance. I'm sorry, our straight line, not our double declining balance. We'll do that next. Our straight line is 2400 <clears throat> Now, the following year is a full year, so that's just going to be just the 3200 which is our depreciation for the first year. Now, double declining balance, we're going to have uh, 6,600, so let's show you how we calculate that. So one thing that happens is, this is double declining balance. So we're going to start with the formula is 40,000 times, now it is 10 years, so it's going to be 2 divided by 10. That's the double declining part. And we're going to multiply this times 9 twelfths. So let's run the math here. We should have 6,000 in year one. So we have 6,000 in year one. Year two, remember the balance goes down, so it's going to be 40,000 minus the 6,000. This will be 34,000 times 2 divided by 10. And we don't have to adjust it for the years because it's a full calendar year. So we're going to take 34,000 times 2 divided by 10. So that's 6,800. Why does it go up year 2? Well, it's full 12 months rather than only 9 months. So our double declining balance is 6,000 and then 6,800 for year 2. All right, some of the year's digits, some of the year's digits. Now, some of the year's digits, we're going to take um, 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6. So we have a, a total of all the year's digits, which turns out to be um, N times N minus 1, all that divided by 2. So if you take 10, um, no, I think it's t uh, n plus 1, right? n plus 1. If you take 10 plus ele times 11 divided by 2, you get 55. So if you want to add up the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the way to 10, you should add up to equal 55. David, you're probably adding it up right now. I'll wait. Oh, you got 55. Good. Um, so here's what happens. We're going to take the 32,000 times 10 over 55 and then times 9 twelfths. So kind of a, a difficult little problem here. So it's going to be 32,000 times 10 divided by 55 times 9 divided by 12. All right, so we get 43.63 and 63 cents. So this is the 43.64. Now for year two, here's why some of the year's digits is not very popular. We've got to take 32,000 times 10, 55, 10 over 55 times the remaining three months to start January, February, March. And then we got to do 32,000 times 9 over 55 times the remaining 9 months. So this mathematically works out, but it, the problem is you've got to keep up with the 9 months and the 3 months. So this is going to be, let's see if we can do the math correctly, 32,000 times 10 divided by 55 times, whoops, um, yeah, um, times 3 divided by 12, and then 32,000 times 9 divided by 55 times 9 divided by 12. If we did all that correctly, then we've got the right number. If not, then we don't. Here we have the correct number. We had to be careful. And so 
Obviously, you don't need the pennies. So let me just get rid of these pennies. So the year one depreciation is 43.64. The year two is 53.82. All right, let's talk about the, the uh, topics of impairment. Impairment. Impairment is the idea, what if the value goes down? And it's not temporary. Now, this is the intermediate way of saying it's not temporary. It says it should be other than temporary impairment. That means it's not temporary. We think there's a re reduction in value, and so it's going to be impaired. So here's what we need to do. We need to apply the recoverability test, and we're going to take the undiscounted expected future cash flows. If it's less than book value, then we say, yes, there's impairment, and then B is how you measure it. You calculate the impairment loss by taking the fair value minus uh, the book value, uh, subtracted from the book value. If you don't have fair value, then you use the discounted present value of cash flows. So the first recoverability test is a yes or no. Yes, there's impairment. No, there's no. If yes, then we continue. Then we measure the loss. Let's do an example. This, this will be much easier to see. Let's say the cost of equipment is $800,000, the accumulated depreciation is $200,000, and the undiscounted cash flows total $580,000. The fair value is estimated at $525,000. So the test, the first one, is called the recoverability test. Does impairment exist? Yes or no? Well, if we think the book value, we know the book value is $600,000, right? Eight hundred dollars minus the two hundred, dollars And the discounted cash flow, undiscounted cash flows, just the normal cash flows added up equals 580000 then yes, looks like we're less than uh, the, the book value. So yes, there is going to be impairment. And then we're going to measure the loss in a more strict way. So test two is the impairment loss, the, the fair value. We'll say the fair value is 525, the book value is 600, and so the impairment loss is 75,000. So the first one we get a yes, and the second one we get the actual loss number. So here's what we do. This is equipment, so we're gonna debit the impairment loss, and we're gonna credit accumulated depreciation for 75,000. It's like an extra bit of depreciation. Now, what if the asset increases in value and the original value is restored? The company may not restore impairment loss for assets held for use. If it's held for sale, then yes, you can. But if it's held for use, if it's just equipment that you own, then, um, then there's no restoring of impairment. Um, if it's held for sale, if, if you're in the business of selling equipment, then, then that's a different thing. Now, we won't do um, much of this, but here are the notes. If it's held for sale, you can sell in the short term. You can restore the impairment loss up to um, the, the total impairment loss. You cannot restore more than the impairment loss. All right, what if you have depreciation changes? Depreciation changes. If you have an asset that is uh, depreciated over 10 years, and then after year four, you think, hey, the total life is going to be six, then you just depreciate the remaining two years. So if you make a change in the life or the change in the method, then you treat it as the first day of the current year, like January 1. So let's look at this little information. The cost of machine <clears throat> is 9,000, the life is 20 years, and there's zero salvage. The depreciation has been recorded at not 4,500, but 450 per year, it looks like. 450 per year under the straight line method for five years. So at the beginning of year six, let's say no one would do this. Let's say that the total life is 30 rather than 20. Then you're going to treat this asset as 25 more years. So you're going to take the um, the cost is oh ninety oh, I see, I see ninety thousand, and so it's been recorded at it is four four thousand five hundred per year. 
So here, the 90,000 minus the 22,500, and you're going to divide it by the remaining 25 years. This is called, it's handled not retroactively, but prospectively. So if you decide to change the method or change the life, now generally people do not increase the life. They, they maybe make it shorter or whatever. But here they increase the life from 20 to 30. So instead of 15 years left, there's now 20 years left. This is handled only now to, to the future. So then you'd make an entry where it's depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation for 2700 All right, let's also look at uh, chapter 11 problems. I may do another short video, give you a, a couple of short videos on this. So the next one we'll be doing chapter 11 problems, just doing uh, depreciation. Make sure you're in great shape on this. All right, see you in the next video.